Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is John chapter 16, verses 5 through 15. The Reverend Kevin Robson is preaching. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from St. John, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, But now I am going to him who sent me, And none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness, because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. Therefore, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At certain moments, it's as difficult as it gets, this arduous journey, an earthly life through minefields and mountains, undertaken in fits and starts. At times, it brings us to tears, or even wants us to make us scream. And no, I'm not talking about the BOD's budget review today. We may start out with the boundless optimism and simplicity of our younger years, but eventually most adults morph into a more mature and sober realization that things don't always just work out as we expect. You've been there. So have I. We all carry our scars. Along the way, hope is occasionally hit by the circumstances of personal loss, loneliness, defeat. Battle-worn and weary in the midst of times that challenge and vex, change and decay in all around I see. Things aren't the way that they ought to be, terribly unjust, unfair. Jesus saw with perfect insight and understanding that suddenly his own disciples were drowning in an ocean of heartache, of blue funk. They had been stilled into a sorrowful silence, motor mouths now silenced. He knew what weighed them down. This wasn't the way it was supposed to happen. How in the world, Jesus, can you now tell us that you're going? Dear God, I look around now. Out there. In here. In here. And I think, Things are just not the way they ought to be. But notice, says Jesus, 
that I'm sending you a helper who will draw near to you. Armed with the testimony of divine truth, speaking what is heard from within the Trinitarian mystery of the Godhead, the Spirit glorifying Christ, giving to you from the Son who has been given all things from the Father, holding you up along the way that is too hard, too utterly and impossibly hard for you or anyone on their own. This Christ will break open the path to the Father through priestly self-sacrifice, in blood atonement for the sins of the entire world through appearances in resurrected flesh witnessed by countless folks onward through the ascension into the glory of life from the right hand of the Father. The order is important. Pentecost comes after the cross and the open tomb, and is being lifted up once more. Your helper, the Holy Spirit, is coming unstoppably with power and authority to your advantage to guide you into all the truth. And rest assured in this, with such truth, he will convict you regarding sin, righteousness, and judgment. That's his business, his mission with conviction. Convicted concerning sin, says Jesus, because they do not believe in me. The sin of all sin is to reject the person, the word, and the work of Jesus. All other sins flow out of the denial of Jesus as Lord and Savior. Where that sin appears, there is no hope apart from repentance and faith. Apart from the work of the Spirit, our callous and natural state would have been faithlessness. This is the foremost sin in which every doomed man would say, I am God. I come first, to which the Spirit replies, repent. And convicted concerning righteousness, says Jesus, because I'm making my way, your way, to my heavenly Father. This is the work of the Spirit to proclaim through sent messengers the only way of Jesus crucified for the world and in so doing to bring the hearers of that gospel to a faith that receives the righteousness of Christ. Not righteousness in the way that the world conceives it, in what you would do, The world will hate you for this one-of-a-kind righteousness that was never earned by any man save the one. A perfection received only for the merit and work of Christ. His work absolutely, not yours. Delivered with conviction by the Holy Spirit, the one who has absolutely now placed God's holiness upon you. And then, convicted concerning judgment, says Jesus, because the ruler of this world has been judged. You and I think of judgment, laws broken, crimes committed, guilt established and punished. But the good and perfect gift from above, the pure gospel, is Christ's greatest judgment in the defeat of Satan. Jesus only has conquered death with a decree that moves forward through the remainder of all days to the last. Your sins are forgiven, all of them. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain from the foundation of the world. And because you have been brought by faith into this Lamb's life, worthy are you to dwell forever 
in his light and glory. This is what the Jesus who is about to be crucified and then raised from the dead, this is what he wants you to know. Here and now in broken creation, in the midst of things that are not the way that they're supposed to be, whatever the Holy Spirit receives from the Son, perfection, righteousness, innocence, holiness, strength, and endurance, these are given to you to bring you to the Father in the firm grasp of the enduring love of Christ. It is the Spirit's constant remedy to any despair or despondency that Satan would try to lay upon you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen.